MVC's main goal is to make your code modular. It wants you to break your code out into separate units or modules, while having them work together as a team inside your script. Modules are a way to refer to simple JavaScript files. In my Backbone app, modules will contain a specific block of code related to a particular Backbone component. So in other words, code related to a Backbone model would be placed in a JavaScript And as a reminder, backbone event code is mixed in with the other components and won't be broken out into a separate file from my app. Now modules make our code easier to understand than if we put it all in one long file. We certainly could put it in one long file, but that may result in a file that's hundreds, maybe thousands of lines long, and that's gonna to be tough to read. It's easier to go to a certain JavaScript file to make the change than it is to scroll through lines and lines of code. Trust me, I've done this and it's not a pleasant experience. Also, if you're working in a team environment and some of your team members ever need to change the code for you, they probably won't be as familiar with it as you are. So it's best that you make it as readable as possible. Breaking code into modules is an excellent solve for all these problems. So let's look at our index.html file. So on line six, I do have a CSS file here that's really just providing some basic styling for my web page app. It won't affect any functionality. Starting on lines 11 and going down to line 17, I do have some HTML div tags here just so my page has a little bit of structure. It's the script tags at the bottom that I want jQuery, it will let me interact with elements on my web page. With Backbone, this is mostly done with the help of jQuery's .html method. On line 20 is underscore, which provides a wide array of extra functionality to the core Backbone code. The two things I'll be using underscore for in my web app will be to cycle through all of our data, which we need to do so we can get it onto a web page, and to also define the areas on my web page where this data will be placed. This will be done with the help of underscore templates. Now, Backbone is listed next on line 21. Then underscore, then Backbone after that. That's the order that these three particular files should always be listed on your web page. Not doing this will cause your web app to break and not function as expected. Take note that these three files are in a folder called libs inside my JS folder, and that's just a best practice. Libs is short for libraries, and it's usually the place flowermodel.js, and it's in a folder called models inside my JS folder. My model code will go here. Next, I have two view files in the JS views folder. On line 23, I have single flower view.js, and on line 24, I have another one called all flowers.js. These files will display my model information on my web page, and each one has a distinct responsibility. Single flower view.js will define the HTML layout for a single model on my web page, while the all flowers.js file will do the same thing, but for a collection of models instead of just one single model on its own. On line 25 is a reference to allflowers.js, and it's located in my JS collections folder. This is how I'll define my collection. On line 26, as a reference to router.js where my specific route code will go.
at the root of my JS folder, and it's the file where I'll place commands that actually implement all these modules. The separate model files, view files, and so on are basically how I'm configuring my application. But I need to actually execute this configured code at some point. These executions will occur in flowerapp.js. Now, arranging your code like this does take some getting used to. Jumping from one file to another to make different changes is definitely as it makes it easier to change than it would be if all this code were placed in one file. In this video, I created separate module files where specific parts of my code will be placed. Things may seem as if they're all over the place with there being multiple JavaScript files like this, but by breaking them out this way, I've created a code base that I and others can easily understand.